We will now create the Gantt chart using weeks as the calendar frequency. First of all, here we will have the full list of activities, sub-activities and tasks that the project manager has identified for the project. Then we can start again from the first cell next to the activity list. This cell will now indicate a specific calendar week. I like marking the date of the first working day for the given week. For example, we can use the first Monday in the month of March 2026, the 2nd of March. Let's continue filling in the rest of the weeks in March. I will manually add the next one, 9th of March. From now on, I can automatically fill in the start day of the following weeks. I do this by 1. Selecting the two cells with dates and 2. Drag to the right. I will drag three more cells to complete the month of March. There we go. The start dates of the weeks in March are now filled in. Each column represents a specific calendar week. In the same way, I will add the weeks for the whole period of my project. Great, week titles are ready. Now we can mark the activities in the space against each week as we did in the previous lesson. We can now also track the plan in greater detail in the Gantt chart. The exact week when an activity is supposed to start and end is now visible. As we did in the previous lesson, we will add the months and years in two new rows above, merging the cells above the March weeks, naming it March. We will continue in the same way for the remaining months. Then we repeat the same for the years. Great, the calendar is now easy to see. OK, now we need to improve the appearance of the first four column titles. The titles are only displayed against the week titles. We can simply merge each cell with the above rows, so they align with the whole calendar, week, month and year rows. One by one, we merge and align. Nice. Finally, we will see a few formatting tips for optimizing the main space of the chart. Here are a few options to optimize the width, which comes from longer time periods. Select all columns, including week dates, and double click on a random border at the top. This will optimize the width of the columns and save you some space. If this is still too wide for you, you can change the format of the date in the weeks row to two numbers only. We do this from the Number Format menu. After we do it, we need to optimize the width of the entire table again. OK. Another option is to change the orientation of the date text. Select All Date Cells, click on the Orientation menu and select Rotate Text Up. Again, we repeat Tip 1. space is now optimized. At the end, it is good to select the whole table and apply outside borders from the borders menu. So there you have your Gantt chart. It is extremely useful for so many reasons. It illustrates the activities against the calendar period. You can see which activities move in parallel with which ones sequentially. You can see in a matter of seconds where you are today and what is upcoming for your project team. Hence, it is useful not only during the planning phase, but also for monitoring and control purposes. All right, in the next lesson, we will see the last Excel tutorials and create some budget documents. Money is waiting for us.